is so funny. And today I am going to carve a bear face. And I am real excited about that. Um, you can see over in the top left hand corner, there's some kind of carving there. And it was <laughs> a bear that I had attempted to carve a few days ago. And there were things about it that I liked, but it certainly wasn't worth uh, showing. I didn't mean to put that in camera view. And it looks like I did, but I didn't. <laughs> um, but I did want to use it as a guide for some of the things that I liked about it. So it was there for my sake, but certainly not for you to look at. Um, I wanted to, you know, after trying, attempting that other one, I wanted to make the nose at the, the corner's edge of the soap, because I thought I could really utilize that for the nose of the bear. It does put it at a little bit of an angle, but that's okay. I just wanted to try it to see if I could make it work. And I was really pleased with the way it came out. So sketching the bear out onto the soap, that was a lot of fun. And remember, if you're doing this, if you're sketching it out on the soap, that, you know, if you don't dig in too deep, it's just a guide because you're going to be carving a lot of it away. I was told by a friend that I should try and carve Alaska animals because... A lot of Alaskans like to get carvings of animals that we're familiar with here in our beautiful state. And right now it's springtime and the bears are coming out of hibernation. I don't want to see a bear personally right now because I know they're hungry. <laughs> but, um, but I do love the fact that I live in a state where they flourish. Um, we have many types of bears, and I was just watching a special where they were showing um, grizzly bears and then polar bears, and um, I like strange and unusual things, so I've also looked up um, the grizzly and the polar bears sometimes, especially since our um, climate has changed, that the the boundaries uh, between where grizzlies would be and polar bears would be has somewhat been blurred and there are actually some growler bears it's a part grizzly part polar bear so you could call it a growler bear or a pizzly <laughs> it doesn't sound so intimidating to be called a pizzly so so I call them growler bears but they're really amazing, amazing animals. So powerful. And if we're going to talk about strange animals and, and mixing animals, there's also the liger, which is a lion and a tiger mixed together. If you've never seen any pictures of these, I, I dare you to look them up because they're pretty, pretty amazing creatures. You would think that they're that I'm just making this up, but I'm not. You can actually find them. Yep. So I'm really, can you tell I'm having fun going around the nose and the mouth? And it's the feature of this carving that's gonna make it, you know, special is the nose area. Of course, um, the ears need to be set back a little bit. You don't want everything up at the front face of your carving um, so I set the ears back on the face 
and it was difficult keeping the eyes small. Comparatively speaking, the bear's eyes are quite small compared to its really large face. Um, we live in a day and age now where big eyes are like the thing, you know, oversized eyes. And so maybe, maybe if I were doing a real cartoon looking one, I could give it some really, really big eyes. But I tried to stay within the parameters of what would make it look like I was trying to stay somewhat realistic. But it's so fun carving the different shapes and giving it the different textures really can give life to your carving piece. You can tell that I'm getting quite a pile of soap shavings there. I have a container that I keep them all in from all my mini carvings and I'm trying an experiment right now where I have it in like this Tupperware type container and I mixed it with really hot water and really kind of squashed it together kind of and I think I used my uh, mashed potato masher and really worked it out and made it into liquid you know I really liquefied it and uh, try not to use too much water but I wanted it to be pliable so um, I got it set and took it out I've got this big ball of soap that now I'm trying to dry and if it works then I can have as big a square of soap as I want can you imagine all the things that I can carve? <laughs> Doesn't take much to get me excited about that. <laughs> now that I have it all textured, I started painting. And I like to start with the dark and then add on. It's a lot of fun. I used acrylic paints on this one. I loved how it covered really well. And I used about four different colors of brown. Here it is all glazed. Ready to be sold. Thank you for watching Debbie Doo Day.